Let's come to this uh, seminar. Welcome to this seminar class. Um, as I may have shared with you, this is really going to be a very different class type of class. It's a seminar class. It's a research class. Um, and um, it's certainly not going to be a traditional class where we have um, book chapters to read and or uh, many formal presentations. So um, the emphasis is going to be on, um, as I was telling yesterday in our group meeting, on uh, creative thinking, creative research thinking. Um, the topic of this seminar really is where I um, see our group going. Uh, this is at the core of what we are currently working on, and it is at the core of where I see our group going in next year two and three. Um, um, the um, so for um, the for so for our junior members of our team, meaning those who might have started PhD one, two, or three years ago, uh, you know, in three years, uh, the, the, those who are in the first three years or so, uh, this may be. Um, at different degrees, different levels, um, <coughs> you know, this will help you think about what will be growing, hopefully growing opportunities. To the extent that we continue to make uh, keep a robust research program, it will help you uh, get a sense of where we are going to grow. But it is also going to be one of the things, as you know, I have to do is to uh, steer you, uh, steer the PhD students towards picking the topics that would be um, very, um, uh, um, that is exciting thing to them, but also would likely be very uh, uh, important, uh, will align very well with where, where the industry is going, right? And uh, so here, this will be an investigation. Hi, come in. Are we supposed to have a class today? Uh, did you register for semantic computing, perception computing class? Yes, yes. yes. So, what I want to uh, do is to involve you, those of us you involve in you know, our, our group's research, in uh, imagining, uh, in really thinking about new topics that some of you may pursue, not all of you. Some of you, this of course would not apply to those of you who already have taken their thesis and uh, dissertation topics. So that would not apply to them. But those who are not, is quite possible, and I hope I'm hoping that what we discuss here would actually impact your research with me. Okay? There is there will always be exceptions. There will always be somebody who will not do research along this line. That's fine. But even for those, uh, it will be important because if you are particularly for PhD students, it will be important because when you are doing PhD, other and, and you are entering for research job, you are expected to know your group's research, and this is what it is right now, okay? At the same time, you get to, uh, to play a role in defining that, because in this kind of class, you know, I myself am learning. I am here, I'm doing this, often this class, also to keep myself up to date. Right? Um, and so you will come up with things, um, uh, and you will discuss things that I will learn from, okay? There are, there will be some other uh, unique possibilities. So um, um, let me, uh, all of you should have access to this community. So this is called, uh, if you don't know, this is called Google Plus community. And um, uh, this is what we use to um, uh, you know, share information about this class. There's no textbook. Whatever you're going to read, um, that if you see here, when you try to post something, you will, um, uh, you know, if you suppose I try to post something here. You'll say, it's for discussion, materials to review before class, material after the class or recap, right? So that may be tagged. Sometimes the tab is meaningful, meaningless also. So not 100% of the content will be, um, uh, you know, marked correctly that way. But um, uh, 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 by and large, we'll, we'll, we'll utilize uh, this kind of thing. So if I 
know that there's something that we are going to discuss in the upcoming class, it will be marked as material before the class. If you already have had a class on a topic, we discuss and then I come across new material or you come across new material, then you can post it as a uh, after the class. Right? Um, there is no, there's not going to be any exam, uh, any formal exam. So how would I grade you? Uh, I will grade you um, uh, based on your class participation. And, and I'll grade you based on the quality of discussions that you have. I'll grade you based on my perception of how well prepared you were in the class having read the material. I'll uh, grade you based on the um, um, presentation you'll give here. But even more than the presentation, your real participation. I will, um, uh, you know, you, 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 you really, um, uh, you know, 10 times in the class you gave beautiful, you asked beautiful questions or uh, gave insightful answers to some question or debate. I think you deserve an A grade. Okay? Uh, but if you keep silently here, I don't know what you learned. Well, I don't know how to grade you, and that would be poor grade. So, in fact, my interest is that I would uh, convince you to drop the class after two classes if you're not capable, and hopefully all the rest can get A grade. I don't care, really, okay? Um, but, uh, and, and typically for this class, this kind of class, I require 100% participation, meaning I need because I would prefer that all, all the people who remain in the class get good grade, but that is that they earn that grade by total participation. There will be exceptions. There will be exceptions, uh, uh, A, for some of you who have um, upcoming um, uh, publication and you have, you, you know, for one or two weeks you want to just come to the class but don't do anything or not. You're not prepared for those for the class because you are you have a deadline, you have time off. Meaning, I understand you have parallel research going on, and you need uh, uh, you know uh, uh, exception because of that. Because you know, understanding that 100% of these are kind of research students here, it's okay that you um, uh, you know uh, are there. Just let me know, keep me informed so that I don't harp on the fact that you're not prepared. Right? Uh, there will be some exception in that uh, for uh, possibly, um, let's say, Shreyans. Uh, he uh, is here kicking and streaming, uh, you know, screaming. He didn't want to take this class. Uh, and I think there is a reason for that. I mean, he's, you know, been here for a while and, you know, kind of, you know, uh, you know, at the, at the time where I think he, he he is making pretty good progress towards his thesis topic, a dissertation topic. So, um, it may, if it, to the extent that it is not highly aligned with the new thing, the future thing we'll be doing, well, it's okay. I think he has achieved a lot in the past, and he has attained until this, you know, this kind of discussion passed. So he may take a little bit of pass, kind of thing, and maybe he would not present as much as some of the junior students would be presenting it. So that's fine. But I'll expect from him perhaps good intelligent observations. Just listening to people, and you know, because you should be more experienced, so you should um, come with uh, you know uh, with the ideas of his own, even though he doesn't have to prepare as much as you do. There is other thing that I'm really looking for. So I'm really looking for, you know, I I I really like to take pride in our research tools, right? So I'm looking for the skills that you really. Uh, would need to have to compete with the best in the world, right? I mean, all of you, at least PhD students, I expect you to compete with uh, your uh, counterpart from the top 10 and top 20 universities and schools, right? Well, how, and, uh, we've been having this all the time. Here, I expect you to put, in, put that in practice to show me that you are creative, that you are imaginative, that you are innovative. So that's what I'm looking for, right? Um, there is another um, uh, very important thing that is happening. So, all, most all of our research. So today I was having a chat with Emily. I was kind of bringing her up to date. Uh, uh, 
By the way, Sians, can you just take a detour and see if Emily's still there? She should be in this class. Oh, okay. Um, so um, I was having a chat with Emily, and I was uh, basically um, uh, noticing that um, almost uh, all the exciting things that we do in this uh, uh, group, in our research, uh, have a, a form of interdisciplinariness, or, or you know, form of you know, the, the work is interdisciplinary in one way. And some of our best work is done by people who came from other area. So, so uh, you know, Cody Hansen, his undergrad was in co cognitive science, and um, Cody um, uh, uh, did the work on semantic perception, which is uh, very key. In fact, you see this perceptual computing. In a way, Cody, she's that, not. huh? Yeah. Um, she's not there. Yeah. So, so. Um, um, uh, that cognitive science thing, um, learning from cognitive models, became a very important um, um, aspect of how that particular perceptual computing part of our research plan was uh, developed. Right. So, uh, as a matter of area topic, right? What is involved in the this course? What are we Fundamentally, we are trying to debate how would machine be more intelligent in the future. Right? If I to say in a phrase, what are we after? We are after uh, making machines more intelligent. Right? And within that also, we are particularly interested in saying, when you, when you say intelligence, what is, it, what is the mark of intelligence really? How, Really, if you are, if you use the word intelligence, you're really talking about human. So that by, by that I mean, I don't know what other form of intelligence we are really talking about. When I, even though I say use the word machine intelligence, really the idea is that machines behaving as displaying the intelligence as a human would uh, exhibit, right? And how can we talk about intelligence, human intelligence, without talking about human brain, right? Thus, we are really interested in brain-inspired compu uh, uh, in, uh, computing. Now, brain-inspired computing um, doesn't necessarily mean that we know how the brain works and that we will come up with a, an algorithm to implement that. Right? It doesn't mean that. Why? Because we don't know, at least I believe, we don't know how the brain works. Every time we think that we know how the brain works, scientists, neuroscientists, somebody else, you know, other field, come up with, uh, you know, understanding, uh, you know, that machine, that, that human brain does something differently. You know, in, in, in human, or that human brain has yet one more capacity um, uh, human have, uh, brain has more uh, neurons than we thought it had, or that uh, human brain doesn't really just um, uh, create the thought or process thought by a simplistic uh, communication with neurons, that there is something happening in terms of a community of neuron, uh, uh, the different regions cooperating to make the understanding. Even when I am talking to you, Right? My brain is constantly utilizing on the side spatial cognition. I'm not conveying spatial cognition. The, my, the, 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 my main discourse here is nothing about has nothing to do about spatial thing. And yet my brain is doing that. And yet that is a, an important thing because that tells me uh, my own perception about my movements. And perhaps it controls me as to whether I'm moving too much and uh, you know uh, uh, maybe I'm being you know. Maybe I'm, I'm using too many expressions. Maybe I should control myself. You see what's happening here? Right? So, the, so what is that intelligence? I don't think we fully understand, except that it is like the way human does. And then, so it can be, doesn't, it doesn't have to be, that's why one of the debate topics that I put up here is that I want each of you to take, uh, uh, you know, a side. What is that? I put here. What have I put? 
Let me see if you are read here. What I say? Is the human brain it's like a computer? Or it is not. Or it is not, right? So I put that as one of the debate points, right? I want each of you to take a perspective, a, 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 a side, and come ready with argument, right? So what we are going to do in one of the upcoming class, maybe next class or one after that, we're going to create, you know, uh, two sides. We will, you know, face each other, and we are going to have a moderated debate. So perhaps I'll be moderator, and perhaps, you know, uh, the two sides. Uh, uh, you know, would uh, I, I'd be interested in seeing how many shows in this side versus that side, and I would like you to end. Of course, um, um, you you ought to be very, well prepared, having read views from both the sides, both from your side, the side that you're going to agree with, and you should read the views from the other side and come ready with, uh, you know. Uh, 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 um, breaking down, uh, you know, arguing against their, what you think will be their uh, uh, arguments, right? So I'll, I, I, I would, I would um, like to see that happen very, very soon, okay? Um, now imagine what's happening when we are doing that. This may be the only course in the entire, on the, uh, in, 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 in the entire college of computer science and engineering doing that kind of stuff. But it is these kind of capabilities that will allow you to compete and even go beyond your counterpart from other schools. Right? Always, what is it that you have that others won't? And these things, uh, you know that um, if you are in high school, I'm sure there were debates. And uh, I, 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 those who participate in debates, uh, you know, th these guys are typically have show the skills that they ultimately, uh, th that helps them very well. If you can debate well, doesn't mean you have to shout. Doesn't mean that you have to uh, um, work extra hard to convince that you are right and the other part is wrong. Debate, you know, the soft skill of convincing others. How would you argue? The, the, the argumentative aspects of it, for example. For example, um, in, in, the, uh, in the process, you would take what somebody is saying, make it a straw man and break it down. That's one way of doing it. Other would be, you would take a perspective that they would have not thought about and have the, challenge them so that they, potentially they have no counterpoint to that. Right? I invite you to uh, figure out how would you have good panel discussion, how would you have good debate. And then come ready with that. Not just the technical aspects of debating this point, but what would you do, and how would you frame your argument to possibly prevail? Prevail, not as you know, as in intellectual prevail, right? So that is what I would like you to, uh, you know, uh, uh, come ready with on that particular topic. Right? That is one of the things that we want to do. There is a growing field called brain-inspired computing. And um, so I would like you to, uh, now, um, when you hear this, what I would expect a good PhD student to do is to actually go and, um, uh, you know, online and search for the top research centers that they can find or labs they can find on brain-inspired computing. And read their one paragraph, one page description of what the hell they think that, you know, what is their research data and see what you can learn from that. Okay, so that's one. Second area that is very relevant uh, to us is neuroscience, which is, uh, again, very closely tied to brain inspired, you know, being, you know, it's a neuro, neuroscience that helps us understand how our brain works at a uh, physical level, right? Physical in the sense neurons and uh, all the things that we may have, a neuroscience try to understand uh, the communication at the lowest level, in our, you know, that which would be neurons, but they also try to understand how our different parts of brain specialize in different things. They also try to learn how they complement each other. They learn uh, what uh, uh, you know happens when we lose a particular fac faculty, brain, you know, uh, uh, part of the brain, right? Uh -huh. They also learn how we compensate for that, and many other things of that nature, right? So you need to get some sense of 
you know, uh, uh, brain exhibits intelligence, and hence having some knowledge of brain will be very useful. It will be useful also saying, oh, okay, so you know, this is what neural computing or neural networks, right? Where did that word neural come from? Then you are, then you can ask the question, you know, neural, neural network. You can visualize how neural network works, right? There are pretty good, you know, video lectures and, and other things you can uh, they, that you can look at. Is they will explain how, you know, uh, neural networks and algorithms for that. And then you can watch, uh, you know, uh, neuroscience research on neurons, and then say how well, how complex is our neural networks compared to what neuro, neuro, neuroscientists think, how um, uh, you know uh, how the brain works. So, it, as an example, deep learning. If it is supposed to be an intelligent form of an algorithm that you know hopefully does something more intelligent than other form of algorithms, then, well, you see three layer, four layer, five layer. What is what is what, what do neuroscience think? Is that a, is that a computation that is layered in some sense? Does our mind or does our brain? explicitly deal at different layers or levels and then go up the next level or it is all mushed up it's all right what what it is right now suppose suppose you get an insight that it is not so clear and then you say okay the deep the deep learning and deep neural nets are based on these clear cut layers. And they feed back from one layer, this back propagation is they go from one layer to another layer. That means they are highly approximate to human thing. Let me give you an, a more advancement. So let me give you uh, a way of a, a, a something that is intermediate between two layers. Hypothesize. And then say, oh, if this is a problem, I see this problem by the strict layering and stratification, maybe I, I may not be able to create brain's level of complexity, arbitrary level. Let me see if I can uh, provide a way to uh, intermediate, give level, uh, layer intermediation. Just, I'm throwing just an idea, right? So by, by thinking about how brain may be working and say, no, brain doesn't seem to be that layered, uh, you know, doesn't have that layered kind of uh, architecture. So let us see. Uh, what it could be, and let's see how we can, uh, you know, uh, approximate that, right? So this will be again, uh, you know, kind of taking some uh, uh, some ideas from neuroscience and trying to play out and say, hey, this is what's happening in computer science. What can we do, right? The other area of interest is cognitive science in psychology. So, while neuroscience goes deeper into the brain and you know looks at the physical aspects and artifacts of the brain, neuroscience is observational. So not neuroscience, behavioral science, and cognitive science. That's observational, right? So it is looking from outside. A social scientist is observing what, given the input that seems to be coming into us and the decisions we are making. What may be happening? So they are not trying to get into very deep into brain architecture and architecture of brain and you know how maybe we be computing. They are looking at a macro level thing, just like we have microeconomics and macroeconomics, right? So in a way, you can say neuroscience is microeconomics equivalent, and cognitive science is macro, uh, you know, uh, economics equivalent, right? So they are looking from broader perspective very closer, uh, you know, the increasing, um, the increasingly important discipline where there's a lot of interesting that are, things that are happening that we can learn from is called behavioral economics, right? So for example, um, uh, LA library, uh, just, uh, 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 you know, there were a lot of people, uh, kids that were borrowing books from LA libraries and they were not returning it. Even though library would um, uh, put a fine, uh, you know, so there would be a fines. What happened was that, and then, uh, and so library figured out 
to uh, so I was saying, what is happening? People are returning even though there are fines. So behavioral economists came here in the saying that, you know, the fines are um, 10, 15 cents a day, and that is too small to change behavior. Either drastically increase the fine, let's say two dollar or two dollars a day, or take it out. So then they came up with the uh, option, the libraries saying no fine. Or they said, you can work off the fine. So if you have pay $15, every, uh, every hour you sit in library and read, you are, uh, you know, let go of $5 of fine. But the point here is that you know, this, is, this is just an example of behavioral economics. That can also be informing us in that we want to make machine intelligent. As in human, what would be human behavior? Think as in behavior economics, how would we uh, translate that in algorithms, right? So I touched upon just some, as we go along, we'll be looking at more, um, uh, 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 you know, topics, uh, no more areas to learn from, okay? But take as your homework, um, decide which of those areas among all, suppose you don't have time to do all, which one you would be most interested in, uh, uh, you know, taking the inspiration from. So we want to, you know, come up with the ways of how to make machines intelligent, and which areas, sub area, which non-CS area, or which complementary areas, would you like, area would you be interested in, rank them for yourself, your interest, right? Would you want to look at neuroscience? Would you like to look at uh, behavioral science, cognitive science, uh, um, uh, and, and there are a number of other areas. What other areas there are that we can study behavior economics? Right? That, uh, that you would you, you, you'd like to learn from. Okay? And, uh, and try and uh, create uh, simply a list of uh, other areas that you could potentially learn from. Right. So that will be uh, uh, that will be second kind of second thing that you want to think about, right? Okay. Now, uh, there is I have of course I'm pretty deliberate on why why this is the area I want to discuss right discuss right because um, in in future in your own life right you always would have to make a decision on what problem you should take, where you want to take your life. So, and this is particularly good, uh, you know, this is particularly important for those who are going to go in research. See, if you're going to go into development, what happens is that, well, there's a development, there's particular hot technology, uh, everybody in the industry working on that kind of problem uses that technology and they solve that, right? <coughs> but if you're in research, what does it mean? Research, what does it mean? You always have to look at things that have not been done before. Thus, what I am looking for in this class is an explicit training as to how you think about that. How do you pick your research problem? Right? How do you pick? Now, when you do that, think about how would you do that? One of the things that you have to factor in how you do that is what you are good at. It doesn't make sense to pick the topic that is that you are you, that that is too far off you from your field, both of your expertise or knowledge and interest. Right? These are at least three important factors, right? Your current expertise, your current or in skill level, your current knowledge, and your interest. If if they are not aligned with what you want to do, then you are not going to be successful doing research. You are not going to enjoy doing that particular research, right? So, um, when it's going, it's a bit complicated, and I'm not sure I can, you know, say it very uh, clearly. But when I look at uh, our um, uh, strength, right? What is one word? So suppose you are going to look at my strength, right? What is one word that will come in your mind? 
my expertise what 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 one word would come semantics okay so so uh, did you did you did you notice the um um the reason for uh, the uh, ai fellow the for the description did you notice that did you read that story so you started uh, with the databases mm -hmm. and then you moved uh, your topics according to the trends in computer science and no, no, it was not. That, that's the point. You have to uh, root yourself, right? Suppose you are you are a tree and you're growing. Your root center be is important, right? So um, uh, I, I was a fellow in of IEEE in two thousand six, right? Did you read what it is for? Is it the story? That means you didn't read the story. No, huh? What do you mean? Did, what not that one? Did you read the story or not? No, I didn't read that. But here's what I thought. That's not good. See now, now look, look at analyze your action. You always want to base. First of all, I made that point in the group discussion. I talked to that. that you still did not read it. And uh, right now, you make an observation again, not based on full reading. That's a wrong thing to do. You got to base yourself. Right? I gave enough hint. I don't think why would this, I can't think of if I were a student of somebody, forget about a student, if I'm following somebody and there is something of this, news of this nature, I would be sure to read it. So I'm at a loss why you did not read it. It doesn't matter to me if it's because of me. I'm just saying that, remember yesterday I made the point, I think it looks like you didn't notice it. Right? But so 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 what was it? What was the IT plea for? Joy, you want to be doing PhD, right? This is what I was looking for. No, that's not how you do it. So ever if you ever go to other professor and you don't know about it, that's not the way to do it. So. So think about that. The point is, I'm not going to give you that answer to you right now, and this is something you should know. But coming back to what we were discussing, there is what semantics in that, right? And so, uh, if, if there is one thing, um, if 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 I were to pick one word about my research and our research in some sense, it would be, particularly in the past, it would be semantics, right? Yet, you look at the citation for TPI fellow, and you see some other parts. Okay, so uh, uh, have you gone to the publication page and looked at um, the areas in which uh, um, you know our work is most cited? No, no, this is not what I mean. I mean, it's, the answer is all there. So again, that, that really bothers me. Have you ever gone there? Have you, do you remember this? Have you clicked on that? So this is what it means. So these are the, now you see what is happening here. Right? Now look at what is the triple AI citation. First of all, there is a, there is a um, uh, move from uh, semantics and semantic web and semantic database and all that to uh, uh, AI topics, right? My glasses are off. Um, and um, so the idea here is 
that um, having started with database, distributed database, workflow, things like that, right? And and but coming back to the topic of research, you need to know what you're good at, what is exciting that might be happening, and figuring out how you're going to take leadership. And then, but you're going to do on areas, so, so for example, I'm not going to say I'm going to be the best deep learning you know, uh, uh, researcher. That's not how you're going to do it, right? Think about somebody who came from the proper method, that mathematical background and is into the uh, you know, learning path versus somebody who came from a different background. The same thing would apply to you. So during this process, while you're doing PhD or, or thesis research, you're going to develop a skill uh, and knowledge and expertise. And then you're going to say, what next would I where next will I go? I feel that my, and so we started building that. So from semantics, we want, went towards perception. And it is clarified. So one of the homework work for you is to learn what is the difference between all these three. How are you going to do that? So in this community page, uh, there is about community, right? So first, there are two links there. You should be certainly, you should have read this paper, uh, these papers, and you should do that. This is the first thing you have to do, right? So this is at least the narrow definition of what we are. We are, we are not going to be limited to what we have in these papers, but that is the starting point. And then you will see that we have. Uh, uh, this is the. This is, then you you should listen to this talk. So who has listened to this talk? Sunja, you did not. My glasses fell off, and I can't see them. Okay, so that's the um, topic. Uh, that, that's the uh, core of that. That is a. Uh, uh, did you see? No. I think you kept on the table. I thought so, but I don't see it. Maybe already you damaged the ink pad of your feet down. It's broken already. Wow. Okay, so um, that is the you know a ba baselining of the thing. The point here is that we, I want to go as far as we can with this as a starting point. Right? Okay. Now, let me also uh, give you the stretch point. So, so <coughs> once you have read, once you have done this thing, read this paper here, and then watch this video. What I what here is what you need to do. You need to take go to the very bottom of this community, the end of it, very first, right? Uh, message on this, and start all the way to now. That's a lot of work. Now, what would happen? What is the minimum thing you have to do? You have to look at each other post, and you know, but not necessarily having to. Suppose there's a link to a one long, one uh, hour long video. I would not necessarily, I would not require that you re do each of them, right? Because that will take hours and hours and hours. But you do want to know that, ah, there's a discussion on that. Then you say, oh, that is on neuroscience and I'm going to, uh, you know, look at this topic from neuros machine intelligence from the viewpoint of neuroscience. Then you may want to look at them. So you have to make some of the choices yourself and decide whether you want to go into some of them um, uh, at depth. 
Furthermore, some of those posts are links to the videos and conversation talks we had last time we did this course. We did but the, the when did, did, did uh, we did that as a, as independent studies, right? Summer of 2016 was it? 16, 16 but was semantic web the title of the course was semantic no, no, not semantic web course. Advanced the semantic. summer. No, it was summer of 2015. 2015. Summer 2016. Yeah. 2016. Because then the whole 2017, now we are 2018, right? Yeah. So, so a little more than one and a half years ago, we had uh, an independent study uh, on this. However, this will be a little bit different, right? Um, so it will be very helpful if you go through some of those, some of you, not all, some of you who are really uh, ambitious and are really looking for topics in this area. Then, of course, because there's, there's no limit to upper bound of how much you should learn and knowledge. Right? There's always limit to the more lower bound. The, the, there's always lower bound, but there's no, you know, upper bound. You should learn as much as you can. I myself am learning every day and as much as I can. So, what you do is uh, look at some of those lectures, or at least be aware of what those lectures are. Right? So, but one of those lectures, uh, which we recorded, uh, and you can also find on the YouTube uh, channel for Noises Center, there is a channel for all the le class lectures. There you can also find. But uh, be sure to listen to the uh, review of our semantic perception work by TK, Dr. Prasad. First no, uh, he talked about uh, semantic perception work. Yeah, he talked about logic and other things also there. Yeah, gentle introduction mm -hmm. to first order logic. Yeah, uh, yeah, but then he also had another one, I think, which uh, reviewed Corey's work, Corey Hansen's work. That's what I'm talking about. But yes, first order logic work would be also very useful. But at least look at each of the videos that, um, um, at look which of, what was the topic of each of the videos in each of the class last time. Even if you don't, you, you can't catch up with all the things we have done so far. Uh, sorry, all, all the videos, you, you, may not, you may not have time to look, uh, well there may be about 10, 12 videos, so there are about 12, uh, 14, 15, uh, 15 hours of recording from the previous class. So you have to find time. You can do that in two days, right? Um, but uh, but at least be aware of what those things are, right? Okay. Um, then what I'm looking for, I'm looking for again coming back to creativity, innovation. So I want you to come up with something new, something unique. It may be a small delta. It may be a big delta. It may be small data that you can achieve by some work and write a paper, or it can be big data, data. maybe your three years to go and you'll think about it, see if you can, you feel you can achieve that. But think of it as a, an idea of a research paper or a vision paper. Right? A research paper or a vision paper. And then, now there is a stretch goal, and the stretch goal is the following. I have in with me this card. It says Brain Informatics. So when I gave that keynote uh, in 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 uh, uh, in uh, Leipzig, uh, the, one of the uh, person in the audience is the editor in chief of Brain Informatics. And he invited me to write a paper. Right? If I think you or I or you know collectively we come with some good enough idea of what I should write a paper on, what we should write a paper on, then we'll start writing it. Those papers take one month, uh, three months, two months, three months, five months, entire year to write. We don't know. But those can become very influential business press. Right? Every two or three years, I do one of those, right? Very, 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 very. So, another thing that you all must have reviewed is this page. Right? 
have a windows over this page yes noesis.org slash vision and look at this so overarching vision so again this is a required read for all of you and then if you think about it smart data cyber physical social computing and cyber physical social big data augmented personalized health and knowledge will prepare machine study what happened if you look at you know the nomination that was for the IT, AAAI, my, my nomination for AAAI was along these lines smart data so it had knowledge enabled knowledge inspired techniques knowledge enabled AI techniques for getting insights from big data some such text again read that carefully what was that but that came from this so so it is that I work for as you know over the year almost a decade this appeared in 2008 uh, 2008 2009 and my first keynote was on this topic was uh, or 2010 I think okay. but I started in 2008 and I'm I'm typically I fall in 2018 right it's a 10 10 year transformation partly that allowed us to position right uh, for you know uh, th that could uh, there are a lot of papers that then further you know go under each of these matters but this is these are again what you might call as baselines for us and then we are going to build upon them Uh, there is one more uh, piece that I have given you to think about, and that I pasted, pay, uh, I posted only today. So uh, what I posted was this one here. There are some, you know, people who have done amazing, you know, inspirational work. Is, is you know, and the work, the work is still inspiring us today. Particularly whenever Bush, uh, whenever Bush, who remembers the title of his, uh, his seminal work? As we may think. As we may think. Doug Engelbart. What is he about? No, augmented. Augmented. Oh. So, uh, he's, the report he wrote in 1964, I believe, is an amazing piece of work. Amazing piece. Even today it is so uh, relevant. And today, you know, so if we work in this area, if you're going to work in this area, we have, you know, you have to read it. Right? So, what I want here now, in the last last time, you remember last time we read Roger Shank's uh, thing, uh, uh, paper. Some of 2016 class was by Swati, but she presented. Right, but what was it on? Roger Shank's cognition and computers. Basically, he said IBM Watson is not, you know, cognitive. Don't call that cognitive system kind of thing, right? So, very interesting thing, right? So you need to know each of these names and some more. I'll probably fill this up, but I, I, will, I would be delighted if you can come with those names. And then I want one of you to pick, you know, each of you to pick you know, one that name. Of course, so what I'm looking for you from now, when you, as soon as you see this mail, I would like one of you to say, I will take Venerable Bush. The next person say, I will take that. So I don't want to be assigning this. I want you to volunteer. Now, what would happen? You volunteer. That means next time you don't have to do everything, right? So I mean, it's not like you have to volunteer for everything. In this class, you will be volunteering two or three times maximum. But 
It's up to you to catch the topic. Otherwise, the left road will be something else will be assigned to you. Or I will say you did not participate enough, you don't deserve a grade. One of the two things. See? So that I like that initiative. Right? Again, I, you know, perhaps uh, uh, shares can have an exception, but other than all the rest. Right? Berg Hofstra, what is he known for? Hmm? Ah, that, that book, yes. And then earlier I had shared his uh, piece. Remember this piece? Very beautiful piece. Uh, furthermore, beyond this, what I, where I want to go into is to start making some more concrete connection with machine learning and deep learning uh, uh, you know, approaches and intelligence and or how far they are or what might be happening in the future. So um, some of the top deep learning researchers have made beautiful points saying don't think this is general intelligence. Intelligence. Don't think of you know what we where we are is no way close to human intelligence. So I want you to then think why are uh, go you know look at their argument. There is a beautiful picture you know um, uh, a video of Benjio which I had shared with you, where he was claiming that these algorithms become very intelligent. So. This will be on that side where if you were to argue that, uh, uh, that, that uh, um, um, brain is a computer. Then there are others who um, have said that it's not. And you can use generally there, but more specifically now in the deep learning context that it's, we are far off or, or not, you know, right? Near, far. Do you remember my post uh, on singularity? What was my post on singularity? I'm surprised. You remember the point I made yesterday? Being connected, right? So 100% failure. Okay, I'm not going to tell you, find out, but be sure that you can answer it next time I ask you. Right? That's along this line, right? Singularity, if you're going to get singularity, what does it mean? And, well, I had my view. In fact, there are some posts right here, they also talk about singularity. You don't see that happening in our lifetime. All right, man. I remember that point, but I oh, good. Good. You are in my good books now. <laughs> <laughs> the rest need to show this kind of thing, huh? That's so you, you know a shame. I think my patients should be ashamed if they don't know the answer these things. That's what I expect. Because that, generally speaking, it's not again. It's not this particular incidence. It is the this type of thing that if you don't do. That means you're not following the people you should be following. That means you're not keeping up. I keep up with them. Uh, people that I look up to, I, uh, I'm pretty much up to date on everything that they say. If you don't know your advisor's views, then I don't know how you can, do, how you can say you're doing PhD with them. So, so, you know, look into that. Okay, so this is all uh, that I think I should do in the first uh, thing. Now, uh, I'm, you know, the, but I'm, I'm surprised on multiple fronts because if, you know, this thing has been discussed, uh, um, and if you, if you are advisors given a keynote and you not watched it, I think you don't deserve, you know, I, th I don't think you should do PhD with that advisor. It's very simple. So, so keep that in mind. Okay. I mean, just doesn't. It's, it's possibly, you know, it is possibly 
acceptable, you may not know 30 year paper, 30 year old paper, but recent one that sort of relates to what you do, not acceptable, right? Okay, so these are the things that we are looking for. Now, uh, of all these now, who wants to uh, review the book? Uh, we will start with probably, just so that people should be ready, we should start with uh, uh, a review of that book in the context that I just gave you. So who wants to review that on Thursday? Do you remember all of you are supposed to read the book over the break, right? And you have already put the... Uh, so, oh, okay, so there may be some people who may be joining. If you are going to continue the class, there is a post here saying, um, you know, that you have to read a book and present that review of the book here. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. This one here. Okay. So, so these are all the people. These are there are uh, you know these all of you are taking class. So, uh, Utkashni does looking at Goder is uh, Sherbak. Uh, Joey will do the thinking fast and slow by Daniel Kahneman. So you know in the other thing you know is that here is what I expect when you do this. I expect that you know who is Daniel Kahneman. The moment you see that and you don't know, I expect you to ask the question, who is this person, and find it out. It's just a query and look at Wikipedia page. Right? So, so, um, Amir, you know, Amir, who, you know who is this guy? Sure. Daniel Kahneman? Daniel who? Joy, you know him? Who is that guy? No. So the, what I expect is that actually you should have, you should know each other person here. All these are fantastic book. These are some of the best people in the world. Most, if not all. Who doesn't know Richard Dawkins? So as soon as the, the expectation is as soon as you see this, you need to know. If you don't know, do you know Google or whatever and, and find out. It, what, what this means is that this will increase your general knowledge. And the required general knowledge. It's not general knowledge about even the politics in the world. This is general knowledge that is highly relevant to this area of, you know, machine intelligence and other things that we are trying to do. Okay, so who, who wants to offer th Tuesday, uh, Thursday review? Come on. Okay, so Ruan, you are on. It also works because I read that book. And uh, who wants to do, uh, and, and we may I probably, I don't want it to, to be too long. Okay. Um, that is not, that doesn't make it easier to present. But, um, how do you summarize a whole book in half an hour, in one hour? It's not trivial always. So what is important? What is not important? What aspect of what is discussed here um, is um, uh, something that is important or relevant to this class, to our general uh, objective of you know do this uh, you know talking about machine intelligence that you have that's that kind of things you have to do hmm? 
Okay. Um, in addition, so the next class's agenda is, um, he will give you that. 100% of you must have uh, reviewed the keynote on semantic cognitive perception. And um, you should have done um, most of the browsing just at the level, at, not necessarily all the details, but what, you know, going from back, go through all the messages. What, what are, those keywords that you'll see will get, give you a good idea of what, where we are going, what, what, where you want to go. Any question? How, how does it, do you, do you see, uh, understand, especially the PhD students, do you understand the, the thought process, the, the core belief system behind this kind of research seminar and why we are doing it, right? So this should be, a, you know, I think that should lead to a huge progress. Once you, suppose you do this thing and you go to AAAI, you'll be able to talk to a lot of people. Number of these people will be showing up at AAAI. Not number, it's just few of them because some of them are way too senior and old. Who read uh, uh, the topics of uh, each of the eight AAAI fellows, new fellows? Did anybody read that? What was? Hmm? What was? The eight AAAI fellows this year nominated, uh, elected. One of one of them. You are you are one of them. Right, so what is, so none of you have read uh, what I was nominated for, what, what I was elected for. And I was asking if you had uh, looked at the, there's a tweet by AAAI, right? Which Sanjaya had found on the same day, right? And none of you had found, which is a shame, basically. But the point is that they are all nominated for certain areas. AI is a very broad area, right? So by looking at what areas they were applied, uh, you know, they were elected for, it gives you an idea of either the areas, that, you know, the, if, if I were you, and if I an AI, I would, that, what, what would I do? I, with that, I'll understand, oh, these are the new people, these are their institutions, but they have been, uh, they have won for this reason. This, they will always say, you know, for what, right? So that will tell, then I'll ask, so are these old areas, mature areas for which they got selected or are these new areas? And if they are new areas, I'll particularly pay attention because that tells me how the, which are the areas the field is evolving rep most rapidly in. Or it will tell me, you know, none of these guys are in deep learning. What is happening? Why? Maybe there is just still not enough work by a single person or although uh, the, one of them, uh, uh, this guy, the Toronto guy, the Toronto guy he, he has been a fellow for a long time, but none of the others are. So I don't think I see a Gioni or, uh, you know, Pedro is I think, I have not seen Benjo. So this kind of, so it will give you, it have me thinking, so you get a person, perception of the development of the field, you get an idea of what is hot, right? You get an idea of what is progressing rapidly. You get an idea of what is, uh, ha what has matured. These are the things that you have to come to learn. Right? Okay. 